Another week, another reset for Warframe. What's happening this week? Well, for the Archon Hunt, it's the Amber Archon Shard, which means Archon Nera. A mobile defense mission, followed by survival mission, then obviously the showdown. Take out Nera, get an Amber Archon Shard, meaning Bird 3 should be selling the Crimson Archon Shard, I think. Normal Daviri Circuit has a choice of Gara, Cora, or Revenant parts. Steel Path Circuit for Incarn and Genesis devices is the Zylock, the Cybear, the Dread, Despair, or Hate Incarn and Genesis devices, or if you have them all, Rifle Riven, Pistol Riven, Melee Riven, or 20,000 Kuba. For Nightwave this week, Elite Acts is Kill 100 Xmas and. Win three wagers in a row without letting the enemy score a single point in the index. In a row. That's why it says in one match. Not bad. Normal acts, complete one sortie, and fly your Keith for 1,500 metres. That's Daviri. It doesn't say it, but it is Daviri. Uh, actually, it's not. In, you can do that in any open world area. Because the Keith can be summoned outside of that now. I keep forgetting that's a thing. For cred offerings, Varuna's Altlet Helmet is here. That does look pretty nice. There is the Wolf of Saturn 6 Dark Glyph. Yes, it has finally been fixed. The line across the top has gone. I do absolutely love that. The Wolf Hood for your operator. Blueprint for the Wolf Hood for your operator is there. There is Aura Wise. A lot of them. Dead Eye. Sniper Rifle Damage. 52.5%. If you're running a sniper rifle, it can be very useful. Shotgun Scavenger, Rejuvenation, Squad Receive, plus 3 health regen over time. Infested Impedance, slows down the infested. Steel Charge, 60% melee damage. If you're going melee only, and again, it's kind of a must. Enemy Radar, plus 30 to the enemy radar. Sniper Scavenger, there is the Sindor Manticore skin. Blueprint. Blueprint. It should really say Blueprint. But it doesn't. But that does. Sometimes the naming of these is just kind of weird. The Atarax Desert Camo Skin Blueprint. That would be the whip. The Karak Desert Camo Skin Blueprint. The Sindo Dagarak Skin Blueprint. The Emissary Emblem. Remembering emblems go on your arms. Sigils go on your back or your chest. The Saturn 6 scene that allows you in Capture to go in and have a look at that. The Wolf Beacon. Only way to summon the Wolf of Saturn 6 into a mission is with a beacon and you have to do this to get a hold of the parts for the Wolf Sledge, so very useful. The Ceramic Dagger Blueprint to build the actual Ceramic Dagger, the melee weapon. Not too bad of a weapon. Not the best, but not too bad. There is the Jaw Sword Blueprint, same kind of deal, that is for the actual melee weapon. I think I prefer the Dark Sword out of the three. Probably because it's got the most damage to it. And it's radiation based, which makes it really useful. Blueprint to build that is there as well. There is Grawl's Pobla Floof, Volt's Electric Shield Augment, the Tetra Projectile Speed Augment, and Ivora's Quiver Augment. Before I forget, there is also the Dex Rak Rakasa Shoulder Guards. It's basically the entire armor set and the Kavat genetic code. It's all inside of one alert. More importantly, the Elite Alert is live till <laughs> of all dates. May 10th at 10.59 a.m. Just so I'm exact at when it ends, then it's the last Elite Mode for their 11 year anniversary and the Umbra former. It is well worth doing this. Maybe, was it a 10 minute survival? But it's worth it because Umbra former blueprint. Oh, and the armor set and the Kavat genetic codes. It basically ends next week with the Operator deck suit, which does look amazing. Teshin Steel Path on a store this week will have, of course, 30,000 Endo. Not that amazing, worth it if you happen to have 150 Steel lessons. but in all honesty, keep the 150 Steel lessons. use it for the Umbra Former, 30,000 Endo, 
not really that hard to get. Can be useful if you're really desperate for it and you want to save some time. Otherwise, 150 steel essence. Or would you rather have 30,000 endo or an umbra former? Take the umbra former every time. And lastly, checking on Necroloid for the Deep Archimedia this week. A disruption mission, then a survival mission, then... Okay, the assassination has me intrigued. I love the risks and everything else in these. They are really fun. But two Necromech demolishers will attack any conduit, but their health is reduced. That's not really adding to it, um, making it harder. But, the vampiric side, slow-moving immortal Daviri enemies. The drain health and energy from allies who get too close. Oh, these life support towers for the survival only, a, oh, only activate after 20 enemies have been killed within a radius of them. See, that makes it slightly harder. Yes, there's two demolishers, but still, lower health. Why not just have one and make it harder? Xmas units for the assassination support the fragmented tide and its final form. Ooh, rupturing fragments replace shoveling fragments? Hmm, that assassination really has me intrigued. But, you have to obviously do the disruption, then the survival, then the assassination, one after the other after the other, in one go. You feel the survival, you gotta start again. And you have to choose from the loadout that it gives you. You can take one of these, to do all of these. <laughs> and then, hmm, hmm, not even kidding. And it's still... When he gets it to level 15. Unless, of course, you go in with the actual loadout to get it even higher, but to get a hold of the Archon Shards, worth it. Really is. But with that, we'll leave this off here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hmm.